Alright, what's up guys, and of course always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And this week we're gonna cover the OG water types, Cloister versus Blastoise. I mean, they're both Generation 1, and they've actually been shifting between viability depending on what they do, and they carved very, very defined niches for themselves, though I would say that their viability are on par with another, and, you know, they got in tools for each generation. One generation Cloyster was better, one generation Blaster was better, you know, Blaster's got the Mega Evolution, and Cloyster got the Skill Link, and you just, it's been back and forth whether or not which one is really better. And uh, this time I actually really wanted to talk about them, as Blaster's got new tools to actually be while he got nerfed with losing his Mega Pokemon, it actually got another move in Shell Smash, making it another Shell Smash sweep, but much like Cloyster really has been defined. So, it is now on Cloyster's turf, and this is often a defined Cloyster for quite a long time, but, you know, they're both have niches, and these niches are actually on par with one another, so I figured I actually compared the two because they're really good at what they do, and they do similar things. And they've done that like since forever, most of it. So with that said, it's over to me to go over their league viability, their smoke and OU viability, but also just overall niches to find out, of course, which one of these two that really are better. I'm gonna start with the Pokemon introduced first, which theoretically is Blastoise, because it's in the early Pokedex, but I really couldn't tell whether or not it is the first one. But who cares, right? Blastoise, you are off. So there is no coincidence that we talk about the bulky water type. What is that? Well, theoretically, water type is just a good defensive typing. Resistance to fire, ice, steel, and water are really fair, and a weakness to only electric and grass makes this Pokemon naturally very, very, very patchable against most things. And of course, it pairs just well with a regular grass type, as they do cover each other's ground really well. But even if you are a water type, you're not bulky by default, you need to have the stats also, and of course, here's where Blastoise really delivers, as Y79 is not necessarily the highest of HP, 100 in defense and 105 in special defense will mean this guy resolves a lot of issues naturally, it is absolutely bulky. It's not that offensively scary, however, 83 in attack and 85 in its special attacks is necessarily not that scary. There is one thing to consider though, that due to the Mega Evolution in God's Generation 6, it got a really broad move pool, so on the special offensive side, it is actually quite ferocious with really high damage moves that it didn't have before. But yeah, the power is absolutely not there, and uh, its physical move pool is quite interesting also, we're gonna cover that later. But yeah, 83, 85, not necessarily that scary, but 78 in speed for being a bulky Pokemon, much like my Lorik. Uh, while without recovery, it is um, a Pokemon that actually does outspeed other tank your Pokemon, and that is a weird niche to fill, because it also means that it speeds your potentially offensively bulky tanks, and Blastoise really, really does pressure those kind of matchups quite naturally, so it's really interesting the stat distribution, as it's very balanced, and of course a bit on the bulkier side, but overall, it's actually a really good stat distribution. When it comes to its abilities, it's Rain Dish and Torrent. Torrent is very usable, of course, boosting your Water moves 50% when you are below uh, 33 HP, and you got Rain Dish, which you recover duly 112 of your HP in rain. Combine that with leftovers, and you're looking like recovering close to 20% each turn. That is quite scary. While it is a niche, it is considered a bulky war type, it is very scary for Pokemon of this caliber to actually get recovery back, because it might actually be recovered enough to actually be not that offensively shit as well as one would hope to. But with that said, a Pokemon is always as viable as its move pools allow it to be. So what do Blastoise here have to make it stand out? Now Blastoise has a few generations behind it, which means it has a really broad move pool. And it's really tough to cover it, but I really want to try to be as fair to it as possible, because if it is, has something to go for it, it is that it's extremely diverse. And it's very hard to define a diverse Pokemon where it does excel at. But it has one niche that always has been relevant, you got Rapid Spin, it's a good spinner because of its defensive typing and is one of the few water types that actually can spin. And another aspect that is really good for this generation really is the Shell Smash Axis. It actually lost unfortunately of course the Mega Form and the ability to actually boost the Pulse moves. But due to Shell Smash it can kind of rec recreate something like that if not even better. 
Um, shell smash boost, of course, your attack, special attack and speed by two, but you lose in your defense and special defense by one. The positive part about this is that it does basically allow Blastoise to be either offensively active or specially offensively active. Uh, always been especially offensive active because of its diverse move pool, but due to this generation, it actually got a few extra moves such as Liquidation, making it really good. But usually moves there is Liquidation, Earthquake, and Ice Punch. It covers the most of things, really. It does get more things to kind of capitalize on it, but that is something I do definitely appreciate. And on the special offensive side, it has a really broad move pool, and you know, you, you kind of have to pick your poison with this guy. But it does get Dragon Pulse, Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, Skull, of course, um, Dark Pulse, Aura Sphere, and um, at least I do believe that's it. Those are the relevant moves, but does, like I said, there are really, really strong fillers, and it does make this guy really scary as it uses a broad move pool to get away with in Shell Smash means that he can pinpoint certain matchup, and that is more scary in a league environment where. As I said, pinpointing matchup do allow you to actually be offensively active versus, you know, offensive teams or defensive team, depending on what it, of course, require. Um, another aspect is Weather Ball. Uh, we talked about Rain Dish before. Combine that with Rain, and Weather Ball is your ally. Um, it's scary, it's annoying, and it's kind of work at time to time. And you should be going with the Dynamax meta due to, of course, Water Moves creating Rain on its own. Yeah, I can pull that off, and that's that's scary. It also got recovery this generation. While unfortunately its life do only record only recover 25% of your HP, it is a recovery move. It has a few priority moves also in Fake Out and Nokojet, and both of them are relevant in their own right. <laughs> I really mean that. Uh, also, got it got Focus Blast this generation. It didn't have that before, and it, while necessarily since Aura Sphere is such a reliable filler, if you want that extra power, you got it. It also gets Water Spot, which is something it has like forever, and you know, for the Scarf set, that's really, really annoying, and it kind of works at times. And um, let's see, it has something to believe Crunch also. Uh, another weird thing for this generation is Body Press. This guy had already 100 defense and has Iron Defense and Skull Bash, two moves that go hand in hand with Body Press. So it just it just speaks for itself. It gets so many good utility moves that you're really just gonna pick your poison. As you see, this list is enormous, and you can really just go through it and see for yourself what this guy gets. But quite frankly, you know the Shell Smash variant is very scary, very very capable and competent in very a lot of matchups. But the defensive set is also really well, and um, there are a few moves here not mentioned. There are of course the transferable moves from its previous generation. There are only moves that I would see is relevant there are moves like Toxic, uh, basically because of the Skull, the Toxic set to get a rapid spin really does a lot for it and basically it's all it's need but quite frankly as you guys see blastoise is really really good and while it isn't the most offensively pokemon out there or the most defensive one it is absolutely one of the more, most diverse pokemon we got like hands down on this series and i really enjoyed blastoise because of its diversity because it does allow it to be extremely flexible in a league environment but with that said, of course, how do Cloyster hold up as it has been for around for as long time, or as long of a time, as Blastoise has? So if Soul Water is defined as bulky water, a <laughs> really good defensive typing, you splash an Ice type on that, and you know, game over. Um, you resist Ice, you resist Water, and then, you know, you still have weakness to Electric and Grass, much like Water type has, and you have weakness now to Fighting and Rock, so you got added on. Sure, Water type did help Ice would actually reduce weaknesses to Fire and Steel, but four weaknesses and two resistances, yeah, it is not a good defensive typing, nor will it ever be. However, Ice as a stab combination, come on. It is Ice one of the best offensive typing there is, and Water do allow it to actually win a few extra matchups versus rock types and that has to be considered a good thing even though it is unfortunate to see that ice type might actually in some combination ruin a pokemon at least when it comes to the stab or combination itself now with cloister cloister has been scary relevant and offensively very 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 scary and you wouldn't think of it looking at the stand attribution and that it is an offensive pokemon 15 hp 50 in hp yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you got 95 in attack, which is quite right, and 180 in defense, barely fits the screen there, buddy. But yeah, you know, it's clearly defensive, it can take absolute physical hits, and the special attack is the same as Blast, 85, 
45 and it's special defense, so ha! <laughs> Alright. And then you got 70 in its speed. So roughly the same speed as Blastoise, but not as speedy. But yeah, it is still speed enough. And consider what it does, yeah, it, it, it's barely a worry. Uh, when it comes to abilities, they're really good. Um, Shell Armor is probably the least viable one of these ones because you're immune to crits, which could be nice, but not necessarily relevant because of Cloister's kind of shaky defensive merits. But when it comes to Overcoat and Skilling, there's where things are at. Overcoat gives you immunity to power moves, but also gives you immunity in Sandstorm damage, which is great for it, as it does allow it to potentially keep their Focus Sash for a longer time. Another viable ability is of course Skill Link, which help even further, making moves that goes like Icicle Spear for two to five times, always go five times. Which makes Cloyster offensively very, very, very scary, because it has a move pool that are defined with this skill link abilities, which we're sort of going to cover, but just going to really say this, that since Generation 4, Cloyster got this niche, it always has been some type of defensive spinner at times, because yeah, it gets rapid spin, of course, but once it got skill link, it defined the offensive typing as a physical attacker, much like me while did, and it's always been relevant because of that. So with that said, let's check out Cloyster's move pool. So when it comes to Cloyster, um, that's the thing, it is not nearly as diverse at all like Blastoise, it's not even close. However, the things it gets are very, very interesting. Like I said before, it has rapid spin, that's awesome, you know, clearly that does allow us, it is somewhat defensive to fill a defensive role, even more so with heavy duty boots, actually ignoring ice types. Pitfall damage to stealth rocks, that's always going to be good. Uh, but also has two way of actually getting hazards on the feeling, both toxic spikes and spikes. So it fills a defensive hazard sacker quite nicely, and it it, it kind of is funny that it gets that, considered that's not what it does right now, but it's something it has availability of actually pulling off. But, of course, the relevant thing here, Shell Smash. It is one of the defining Shell Smashes there is. And the reason for it is because spit skilling, because it does allow something like Icicle Spear to hit for five times. It also gets Rock Blast, and it had Spike Cannon, which I believe is lost in this game, but it doesn't matter. You will get a whole lot further on with both um, Icicle Crash and the Rock Blast. And then usually the moves are either Liquidation, or in this generation, actually Poison Jab, because of the potentially the Pokemon that could wall that set. It also have a special move pool to talk about with both Ice Beam and Hydro Pump. Uh, so, you know, it gets the stuff done. And from previous generation, I guess, moves that are relevant there, they have a garden, it's actually one of them are actually Teleport. Which I think is great. Um, <laughs> because of the defensive merits of the Pokemon. Uh, but also, it gets Explosion, which is something that was kind of defined with the Shell Smash variant. Because if you didn't hit hard enough, you can always blow yourself up. And what do you know, you might actually take somebody with you. And then it's clearly stronger, and then a move that learns naturally, which is, of course, self-destruct. You also forgot that it learns Pin Missile. So not even the Necrossmas are safe out there. To just overall, to, to get in perspective here, yeah, it doesn't get as many moves as Blastoise does, but at the same time, its Shell Smash variant is very, very effective and scary from the Smash, and of course another secondary stab with that, and of course its defensive role with stuff like hazard stacking and spinning. Yeah, it has a lot of things to offer a team, but while it is really, really, I would say clean cut what it does, just it has the availability of doing both of those things really well, if not the best in the game, really speaks for this Pokemon's viability and why Cloyster always has been a threat since the generation was introduced. So like I said, not as part of a move pool, but at the same time, the things it does, and that stab combination and its offensive merits makes this Pokemon really, really scary to deal with on the head-on matchups. So when I was planning for this video, I had one winner in mind. And once I actually collected all the data, just looking through what they learned, you know, the generation before, what happened to them, and just how to transpire this generation, I felt a bit conflicted, because I kind of recognized that both of them actually are quite decent. And I do believe Blastoise has been leaps on pawn leaps when it comes to how offensively capable that Pokemon is. However, it is not a Cloyster. Offensively, it's just not as scary as Cloyster. I... <laughs> 
I really was thinking, you know, Blastoise got so many things right this generation that it has to win this. But as I move forward, you know, look at what Cloyster does, and you know, what switched into a Cloyster after it smashed? There is, there is nobody. There really is nobody. And while Blastoise is theoretically scarier, it has the same special attack. It, it, it's just about that. So it hits theoretically weaker than Cloyster, and I think that's where it kind of gets them. You know, the stab ice combination and being speedier. It's what matters here. Do you want to take a stab ice beam or an ice beam without stab? It could be the difference between actually surviving or dying. And I just think that Cloyster fills that void and combine it in the league aspect ability. I think Blastoise has more diverse utilities for a league. As you know, it's spin, it has defensive utilities. But Cloyster is always scary. Like, even the stacking Cloyster are scarier than Blastoise. Yeah, it's defensively not as active, but... That's not why you use him. I do believe you use Blastoise for defensive merits, but it can't smash. But I don't believe either of those sets in the League Accessibility are scary enough to avoid some damage. I just think Cloyster overall is the more the perfect Pokemon and offensively more scary. It won't take away, of course, as I think Blastoise is awesome, and I think it is actually really good this generation, but I just don't think it is as good as Cloyster has always really been. And that is why Cloyster wins this matchup so with that said guys as always you know leave a comment and of course like and whatnot and do tell me what you think about this matchup i didn't necessarily was that easy and uh, i think it was rough saying that you know what i think cloister is better but it just it feels more natural because anybody who faced a cloister smashing in front of you know the horror and anybody who experienced blastoise and know the horror do tell me because I have not experienced that at all. <laughs> so that's it, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to go check out on my and no any of my other videos. From course, who was really better. And join us next week for going over Dracovish versus Dracosalt. So with that, it, guys. Have a great day and take care. Bye.